describe your range of emotions right now from winning the game, but also losing KD and Kavon once again? Um, I don't think that I can, honestly. I just told the team I didn't know what to say because, um, you know, on the one hand, I'm so proud of them. <clears throat> uh, just the amazing heart and grit that they showed. And on the other, I'm just devastated for, for Kevin. And so it's a, it's, it's a bizarre uh, feeling that we all have right now. Um, an incredible win <clears throat> and um, a horrible loss. Um, at the same time. Arash, over on the left side here. Steve, to your left. Arash Madain with Sportsnet. How many times have you seen the Stephen Clay show just take over a game and deliver when it's all on the line? Um, I've been here five years, so uh, I don't know. 100-plus games times five years. I've seen it an awful lot. It doesn't happen every night, but it seems to happen most nights. Uh, they're amazing. They're amazing competitors, great shooters. Um, Mark Jackson said it years ago. They're the best shooting backcourt of all time. And um, <clears throat> But maybe what people don't know is, is how competitive they are, and I, th I thought that showed tonight. Mark in the front. Mark Medina Bear in his group. We obviously got some of the information regarding Kevin and Kavan with his injuries, but are there any? Is there any new information to report as well? I believe Bob Myers is going to come in and, and speak uh, on the health front. Uh, I don't really know much. Um, Bob was back there uh, during the game. He'll have more information. Go ahead. Anthony Slater with The Athletic. Is there any regrets uh, about bringing Kevin back into the series now that, with what happened? Again, I'm going to leave that to Bob. Right over here, Dan. S Steve, Dan Wanky with the Los Angeles Times. It looked like DeMarcus was not going to be in the rotation tonight, and then Kevin gets hurt. How critical were those four minutes from DeMarcus and kind of getting everybody back into the game after such a shocking thing. Yeah, I thought DeMarcus was um, fantastic tonight. You know, he stayed ready. Um, he didn't get the first call, um, you know, for that second quarter run. We went to Bogut. And, um, and then with the injury, we, we knew we needed his scoring. And, and he, he stayed ready and, and played a, a brilliant game. So uh, very happy for him. And, and um, he's, uh, you know, he, he's been through an awful lot himself. Uh, over the last year plus with, uh, with his own injuries. So this was a great night for, for him individually and, and um, very happy for him. Again, over here in the same row. Steve Brandon Hurley with the Carroll Times Herald. Kawhi Leonard had a huge stretch in that fourth quarter. He took over the game. They regained the lead, the Raptors did, and the crowd was going crazy. You guys could have folded, but you guys regained the lead and then pulled it out. How, were you, how do you think your guys were able to do that and overcome that? I think we went down six, if I'm not mistaken, and um, maybe it was five. I don't remember. Was it five, six? Uh, but uh, Steph and Clay hit back-to-back -back threes, I believe, um, and we got stops. You know, our, our defense was uh, bending down the stretch, but we didn't break. And uh, the last stop was uh, tremendous. Amazing defense on that last play from all five guys. Draymond's block, uh, he covered so much ground uh, on Kyle's uh, shot from the corner. Uh, <clears throat> so our guys just stayed with it, and they stayed poised, and just an amazing job finishing the game. Last three questions here and on the aisle, and Tristan in the front. Steve Logan Murdoch, NBC Sports Bay Area. I mean, talked about resiliency and come, overcoming these injuries. What have you seen from your team throughout this postseason run when it comes to overcoming those types of obstacles? Um, <clears throat> I, I've seen it over and over again, you know. Um, so it's not really surprising. Um, this is who they are. You know, they've, um, they've accomplished so much over the years, and uh, that doesn't just happen. Um, and it doesn't just happen with talent. There's, there has to be more that goes into it. And it's that, that fight, that competitive desire that I talked about, um, and that um, ability to stay poised under pressure, it was uh, brilliant to watch. 
Hello. Trista Crick, USA Today. We talked yesterday about locking in and staying focused on the moment. How unique of a challenge was that after KD left the floor, knowing that you guys had to dig this win out, but what obviously KD was probably going through? Yeah, I mean, it, it made it difficult, especially with the start that we got off to, and Kevin was playing so well, um, so it was a, a real shock when he went down. And um, so I, I give our guys credit. They, they hung in there and, and um, expanded the lead and um, you know kept us in a, in a pretty good spot going into halftime. Last question here on the left side. Steve, uh, Reed Forgrave with CBS Sports. Um, what, the whole air went out of the building when Kevin went down. Uh, everyone seemed shook. How do you and the leaders from your team uh, try to go back out there and, and fight after experiencing something like that? What did you say to them? What was that moment like? I didn't say anything. Um, there was nothing to be said, you know. Um, the Raptors players were telling the crowd to be quiet uh, out of respect, which I appreciated because some of the some of the fans were cheering when it happened. And, and I think the Raptors players understood, you know, how serious it was. And they they sort of quieted the crowd. And um, and there was just a, a couple minutes there where it, it all seemed uh, so eerie and strange and um, it took maybe a, a little bit for both both teams to collect themselves.